In a 2008 Joe Rogan podcast, when Elon Musk was asked whether he entertains the idea that the universe could be simulated, famously said, the argument for simulation is quite strong. We're most likely in a simulation. The topic sounds like it's straight out of a sci-fi movie, but whoever thought self-driving electric cars would be a reality 30 years ago? So what may sound absurd today shouldn't always be dismissed. The question of whether all this, everything you see around you, including all the memories as well as your very consciousness, could be inside an artificial computer is a profound one. Could our entire reality be nothing more than pixels on an advanced simulation? Could you and I have been living a lie, unwittingly participating in a sadistic video game subject to the programming and whims of a higher intelligence? Let's take a look at whether this is scientifically plausible or as preposterous as it sounds. And if it's plausible, how would we test it? That's coming up right now. The simulation hypothesis suggests that everything we experience, our whole universe and everyone in it could actually be an advanced digital simulation created by a higher order, technologically advanced civilization. Think of it as an incredibly complex version of the video games and VR simulations we have today, but so advanced that it is indistinguishable from reality. Supporters of this idea frequently mention progress in technology and virtual worlds to imply that cultures much more advanced than ours might generate simulations so detailed that even the complexity of a character's simulated brain would be enough to make it sentient. But these characters would be oblivious to their existence in the digital world. And if this is possible, then how would we know whether our world is not such a simulation? How realistic is such a notion? We can get an idea by estimating the amount of computing power that such a complex simulation would require. Hans Moravec of Carnegie Mellon University, an expert in robotics and AI, has made a rough estimate of the amount of computing power needed to simulate a human mind. He calculates that this would require about 10 to the 14 operations per second. This is based on computer modeling of individual nervous tissue. Other experts calculate this number to be even larger, up to 10 to the 21 operations per second. This level of computing power could make the simulated beings conscious because they would essentially have exactly the same brain capability of any real humans. Do we have the capability to perform these kinds of computations? No, not currently, but many people, including Ray Kurzweil, director at Google, have argued that such technology is less than 20 years away. K. Eric Drexler, a PhD engineer from MIT, outlined a design for a system the size of a sugar cube that could perform 10 to the 21 operations per second. And Robert Bradbury has conceptualized a hypothetical computing megastructure called a matryoshka brain based on a planet-sized Dyson sphere that would have computing power on the order of 10 to the 42 operations per second. Based on the highest number needed to simulate the brain, 10 to the 21, a total computing power of 10 to the 31 would be all that's needed to stimulate the brains of every single person on Earth. But to make a universe simulation, not only would the brain need to be simulated, but also our environment and the passage of time. How much computing power would this require? Well, simulating the entire universe down to the quantum level would require a computer theoretically bigger than the size of the universe. So that's not possible. But if all we're trying to do is create a realistic simulation for humans, we don't need that level of granularity. When people look up at the night sky, for example, those stars and other objects can be simulated with very few pixels to give it sufficient realism. So for example, if the computer detected that a human was about to look at a planet through a telescope or bacteria through a microscope, it could fill in the details in the moment the observation was being made. Moreover, since all human perception resides in the brain, any perception of an external universe could simply be simulated within the brains of all the simulated humans, requiring no external universe to even exist. So really, in terms of computing power, all that's needed to create a universe is sufficient capacity to simulate the brain. In that case, most of the universe would just be an illusion inside the brain. So if Bradbury's Matryoshka brain could be built, it could simulate billions of such universes. 
but a much smaller structure the size of, say, the Empire State Building could easily simulate millions of universes. How likely is all this? Nick Bostrom, philosopher and principal researcher at Macro Strategy Research Initiative, who popularized the idea of simulation theory, has argued that there are three possibilities for the future of advanced intelligent beings in the universe. One, almost all civilizations at our current level of development go extinct before reaching technological maturity that can support running ancestor simulations. Two, almost all technologically mature civilizations lose interest in running ancestor simulations. Or three, if one and two are not true, then we are almost certainly living in a computer simulation. Additionally, Bostrom created a mathematical model to attribute probabilities to each of these scenarios. So the rationale here is that if civilizations similar to ours continue to be on a rising technological trajectory, unless they all go extinct or have no interest, will inevitably create simulations that mimic their ancestors. And they could potentially create many of them, perhaps millions or billions of such simulations. If so, then the odds favor that we are more likely to be in one of those billions of simulations than the only one true reality. So on the surface, this seems to favor a simulation. But this rationale relies on several key assumptions that are worth questioning. First, Bostrom's hypothesis is unfalsifiable. We can't ever prove that we're not in a simulation because any evidence we collect could itself be simulated. As French philosopher René Descartes realized, we can't know that we aren't manipulated into believing the world is real. But Occam's razor tells us that that's a poor reason for believing it. If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, is it more rational to believe it's a simulated robot than a duck? This seems like a birds aren't real meme. Another problem is whether it's possible to simulate consciousness. We don't yet know the mechanism of consciousness or what part of the brain is responsible for it. I suppose it could work if we expect that it will simply emerge if enough simulated neurons are connected to each other. But if consciousness arises from something more than connected neurons, then simulating a conscious being might not be possible. A corollary to this is how would we simulate the subconscious or unconscious part of the brain since we're not even aware of it. Finally, Bostrom assumes that advanced civilizations would want to dedicate a significant portion of their total computational and energy generating capability to ancestor simulations, which raises the question, why? What motivation would such beings have to simulate multiple universes and its intricate details? Some scientists have argued that quantum mechanics supports the idea of a simulation. For example, the quantized nature of matter and energy might be a consequence of the storage limits of the underlying computer, similar to the limited memory capacity of a hard drive that creates discrete pixels on a screen. In addition, the observer effect, where quantum systems only have definite values when observed, might be a sign of this limitation. And quantum entanglement, where distant objects appear to simultaneously take on complementary values, might be due to a code setting global values. But the problem is that if the phenomena of quantum physics is due to simulation, then the physics of the base reality can't be quantum, since it's by definition not simulated. The quantum effects would not occur there. And this is where this idea falls apart, because if base reality is not quantum, then it works by a completely different mechanism than the physics laws we're aware of. Quantum physics is the basis of all reality, including chemistry and biology. Atoms could not form without it. There would be no living things as we understand them. So what exactly are the advanced beings trying to simulate? Because this universe would be nothing like a universe without quantum physics. In a 2017 paper written by theoretical physicists Zohar Ringel and Dmitry Kovrizin from the University of Oxford and the Hebrew University in Israel, found that classical systems cannot create the mathematics necessary to describe quantum systems. According to them, classical computers could not be controlling our universe. I believe Bostrom, by clever but ultimately flawed reasoning, has picked out a low probability future to make it appear inevitable, when it really isn't. It requires a fantasy universe where technological advancement has had no limits, where planet-sized computers exist with near unlimited energy for simulating essentially advanced VR games. Why would such a civilization want to do this? 
Large gaps in reasoning seem to have been overlooked. The entire theory seems preposterous. But what bothers me most is how this currently very fashionable idea of a simulation is actually so harmful to our society. It devalues every problem and challenge we face. Climate change, income inequality, homelessness. Never mind, because surprise, it's all a fantasy. It's all a mirage created in a fantasy computer by fantasy intelligence. It's all in our head. The universe is a giant computer screen, so no need to worry about it. Really? We need to stop with this nonsense. Now, I could stop right here, but I know many of you might disagree and say, okay, I get it, Arvin, you have a strong opinion. But what if you're wrong? What would it take to prove to you that we live in a simulation? Fair enough. Here are some things that, while not proving the theory, would give me pause, if true. First, cosmic rays. If we're living in a simulation, there might be physical limitations on how much energy can exist in our universe. Specifically, the idea is that cosmic rays, the high energy particles from outer space, might have an energy limit due to the finite resources of the simulation. If there's a sudden drop off in the energy levels of cosmic rays that doesn't fit our understanding of physics, it could suggest that the simulation has hit a computational limit. Testing these energy levels could give us a clue. Quantum error correction is another fascinating possibility. In quantum computing, error corrections are made in order to maintain the stability of quantum information. This reduces the effect from environmental decoherence and noise. Sometimes this is done by redundancy, multiple copies of the same code. If the universe were a simulation, we might expect similar error-correcting codes to be built into the fabric of reality. For example, if space-time is found to be a complex network of interconnected points where duplicate information is encoded throughout the universe, it may have the ability to correct errors by adjusting local disturbances. This could be an indication that the universe is a maintained system, like a running program. That could be evidence of a simulation. We could also test the physical constants of the universe, such as the speed of light, the gravitational constant, or the charge and mass of an electron. If we're living in a simulation, these constants could be subtly altered in different parts of the universe, possibly due to the limitations of the simulation's resources. Any slight variation in these constants would be a strong indicator that something artificial could be at play. Similarly, inexplicable anomalies or glitches could indicate a bug in the system. But so far, no such variation or glitches has been detected. But it could be that we haven't been looking in the right places. Ongoing tests could help us rule this out. From a practical perspective, even if such a simulation were possible, proving or disproving it from within may be an exercise in futility. We'd need access to the external reality in order to compare it to our simulated one. But how would we have access to this if we're in the simulation? An avatar on a screen can't come out of the screen. So far, all indications are that our reality is quite real as much as we may want to escape it. All our problems and anguish, as well as our joys and euphoria are real. And the best we can do is to treat it as the base reality that it most likely is. Speaking of base versus simulated reality, our sponsor today, NVIDIA AI, have created what I think is an astonishing technological advance. They're offering the only AI video creator I know of that lets you turn your ideas on any topic you can think of into full length videos, not just singular clips like other tools. If you have an idea, InVideo AI will put you in the director's seat, independent of your skill level, with very little technical training. You can just type in the idea you want to create a video about, and InVideo will produce a video according to your specifications within minutes. Here are just a few samples of the actual first iterations of videos it made, and the prompts used to create them. The prompt on this one was, make a one minute trailer about how Indiana Jones discovers new age influencers at Area 51. Here's one where the prompt was, create a short horror film about The Exorcist The Beginning. Make the video about a man from India who is possessed by a demon from Spain. The Spanish government sends their best exorcist to help the man 
and get rid of the demon. And here's a third video where the prompt was create a one minute long YouTube video of B-roll of the beautiful and stunning marine life under the sea from a diver's point of view. I'm simply amazed at the quality of these videos. In my mind, this is game changing. You can even edit whatever you want by text commands like add my voice and start with a joke. And even more amazing, you can try InVideo for free at the link on your screen, also in the description below. It'll save you hundreds of dollars on animation and other production costs. Be sure to give it a try at the link in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, my friend.